in this lecture we are going to look into some of the crazy indifference curves now first let us take the case of perfect substitutes so suppose there are two goods good one and good two now we say that the two goods are perfect substitutes if the consumer can substitute one good for the other now that can be in any ratio for example if suppose there are two goods one is coca cola and the other is pepsi a consumer might be willing to substitute one unit of coca cola for one unit of pepsi and as a result we say that coca cola and pepsi are perfect substitutes in the ratio 1 is to 1 now we see that in this case the indifference curves are going to be straight lines they will be downward sloping line and they will have a slope of minus 1 minus 1 in this case because the consumer is willing to um, substitute one unit of good 1 for one unit of good 2 now um, let us look why the indifference curves are straight lines now indifference curves are straight lines because what the consumer is concerned with is the total number of units that is being consumed so suppose if the income of the consumer is 100 and if one bottle of coca cola and one bottle of pepsi both of them cost rupees 10 then the consumer can easily substitute one coca cola with one pepsi or one pepsi with one coca cola so from this income of 100 the consumer will be able to buy 10 bottles in total either of coca cola or pepsi so the consumer will be uh, interested in this 10 units of soft drinks that he can buy and he won't be interested in whether he's consuming coca cola or pepsi and as a result the indifference curves are um, straight lines for example if the consumer consumes 10 units of coca cola and zero units of pepsi he will be at this point and if the consumer consumes zero units of coca cola and 10 units of pepsi he'll be at this point suppose he consumes five five bottles of each he'll be at this point now all these points gives the same level of satisfaction to the consumer because he is able to buy 10 bottles of soft drinks whatever it be coca cola or pepsi as a result in case of perfect substitutes the indifference curves are straight lines in this case these indifference curves they have a slope of minus one because as i said earlier a consumer is substituting one unit of good one with one unit of good two however if the consumer is substituting say one unit of good one with two units of good two then the slope of the indifference curve will be minus two instead of minus one minus one mi i mean the minus sign indicates the negative slope of the indifference curves in this case now we will look into the case of perfect complements so what are perfect complements basically perfect complements we say that the two goods are perfect complements if the consumer wants to consume the two goods in fixed proportions to each other this proportion might be one is to one it might be one is to two it can be anything so let us take the classic example of left shoe and the right shoe the consumer has four left shoes and five right shoes it is obvious that the consumer will be consuming four left shoes and four right shoes and not four left shoes and five right shoes because they are always consumed in pairs and as a result uh, we say that left shoe and right shoe are perfect complements and the consumer is consuming the two goods in fixed proportion here one is to one but this might not always be true for example suppose um, we take sugar and tea now sugar and tea they are perfect complements but in one cup of tea a, con a consumer requires two spoons of sugar in two cups of tea the consumer requires four spoons of sugar so if the consumer has say one cup of um, sugarless tea and he has three spoons of sugar then one spoon of sugar is a waste and as a result the consumer will anyways be consuming one cup of uh, sugarless tea and two spoons of sugar so we say uh, that in case of perfect complements in this case the proportion in which the consumer is consuming the two goods is one is to two instead of one is to one now let's look into how the indifference curves will look like in case of perfect complements. In case of perfect complements, the indifference curves are L-shaped. Now let's look into three points. So if we take this point, if we take this point, and if we take this point. Okay, now let us assume uh, that the proportion is 1 is to 1. That is the example of the left shoe and the right shoe. So if we uh, suppose that this is 1 and this is 1 this is 2 and this is also 2 
Now, if the consumer has one left shoe and one right shoe, he gets this level of satisfaction. Now, if the consumer has two right shoes and one left shoe, then the consumer will be getting the same level of satisfaction because he will anyways be consuming only one left shoe and one right shoe. If the consumer has one right shoe and two left shoes, then uh, again it will give the same level of satisfaction as one left shoe and one right shoe. As a result, all these points they will lie on the same indifference curve and hence the indifference curves in this case as you can see is L shaped. Now um, as you move on, as you move above, the utility level increases because the consumer is able to consume more and since more is preferred to less it gives the consumer higher level of satisfaction and this is indicated by this arrow that is as you move above the utility level or the satisfaction level of the consumer increases now let's look into the case of neutral goods so the uh, what are neutral goods Neutral goods are basically uh, goods uh, towards which the consumer is neutral or indifferent. So suppose there are two goods, good 1 and good 2 and only good 2 is neutral. So in this case good 2 is neutral. Then whatever be the amount of good 2 that the consumer is consuming, the consumer will be indifferent to it. What the consumer will be interested in, how much of good 1 he is consuming. And the more of good 1 he consumes, the more the satisfaction level that the consumer is going to get. As a result, in case of a neutral good, here the indifference curves are vertical lines because we have taken good to be the neutral good. If we take good 1 to be the neutral good and good to be a normal good, then the indifference curves will be horizontal lines parallel to the x-axis. Now essentially the, they are vertical because the consumer is totally not concerned about how much uh, of good 2 is he is consuming. So suppose good 2 is meat which is a neutral good and good one is any good say chips the consumer is totally indifferent between what quantity of meat he consumes therefore he will only be interested in how much of chips he is consuming because that's what uh, that is what uh, which gives him more utility now we will look into the fourth case which is that of bats now here uh, there are again we have two commodities commodity x and commodity x1 and commodity x2 now x2 in this case is a bad that is it gives negative utility to the consumer as a result the consumer will be willing to consume less and less of x2 because it is a bad it gives negative utility to the consumer and as a result you can see the indifference curves are upward sloping we already saw in the previous lecture that if the indifference curves are upward sloping then it is basically because of the assumption that more is preferred to less but if a if x2 is a bad then obviously more is not preferred to less because the consumer will be willing to have less and less of bad as a result in case of bad less is preferred to more and as a result the indifference curves are upward sloping because we are not making any assumption of more being preferred more being preferred to less therefore when x2 is a bad we see that the indifference curves they are upward sloping they have a positive slope however it is very essential to look into the direction of increasing utility so in this case this is the direction of increasing utility so this indifference curve will give higher level of satisfaction as compared to this indifference curve and this we can see by taking two points so suppose we have point a and point b as you can see in both these points the quantity of good 2 which is a bad is the same but x1 is more in this case and since x1 is more in this case therefore it gives a higher level of satisfaction to the consumer and as a result the direction of the increasing utility um, is shown in the diagram now we will look into the case of satiation that we mentioned in the previous lecture as well so essentially what we have been talking about and when we talk of well behaved uh, indifference curves we basically talk about this portion that is the point before the satiation is reached so point a represents the point of satiation point a is also known as the bliss point or the satiation point i'll describe about that in a minute so uh, essentially this is the area this uh, red uh, red rectangular area is what we have talked about so far but what does this elliptical indifference curves represent so after x1 star units of x1 
x1 becomes a bad so it becomes a bad earlier it was a good similarly x2 was a good before x2 star units and after x2 star units of good 2 it becomes a bad so since in this region um, x1 and x2 both of them are goods therefore the indifference curves are well behaved they are convex to the origin downward sloping now let's look into region 2 this region now in this region good 1 I mean good one is x1 which is a good and x2 is a bad now since x2 is a bad therefore the indifference curves here they are upward sloping similarly if we look at this region region 4 quadrant 4 again we will see here that x1 is a bad and x2 is a good now since x1 is a bad one of the commodities is a bad again the indifference curves they are upward sloping because obviously less will be preferred to more in this case However, if we look at the first quadrant, in the first quadrant, both x1 and x2 is a bad. Indifference curves, as you can see, they are concave to the origin. But it is very essential to note the direction of the increasing utility in this case. So this is the direction of the increasing utility. So as you move towards point A, utility increases in the first quadrant because a consumer will be willing to consume less of one and less of two because both of them are bad. And as a result, if a consumer consumes nothing of one, nothing of two, then that is what is going to give more utility because a bad gives a negative utility to the consumer. Now, um, as you can see for all the four quadrants, the direction of the increasing utility is being represented. So here it is this, here it is this, and here it is this. And as you can make a guess, point A is the satiation point or the bliss point. It is a point which gives the maximum level of satisfaction to the consumer. And all the points, all the bundles that are lying around A is going to give um, less satisfaction as compared to point A. And as a result, point A is said to be a satiation point or the bliss point. Now we will look into the case of a discrete good. Now in this case, again we have two goods, good 1 and good 2. But the thing is that the assumption of continuity in this case is not holding. As a result, the, the indifference curves they won't be continuous as we have seen thus far. Now suppose good 1 is available only in integer quantities for example say good one is cars cars always cannot be bought in fractions therefore they can i mean they can always be bought in integer quantities as a result you can see one represents one unit of car two represent two units of car they can always be bought in integers and as a result the indifference curves they won't be continuous it is discrete so the black dots represents uh, the bundles that can be chosen and uh, the line joining them the blue lines are the indifference curves so if we take three points say this point this point and this point they lie on the same indifference curve but then the indifference curve is discontinuous so i mean you can draw this with dotted lines so these are dotted lines So in this case, basically, the indifference curves, they are not continuous. Now, how do we define uh, the bundles that are weakly preferred to this indifference curve? And how do we define the bundles that are uh, not weakly preferred to this? Earlier, when the indifference curves, they were continuous like this, we said that all the portion lying above it are weakly preferred to the bundles that are lying on the indifference curve. And those that are lying below it, they are not weakly preferred to the bundles that are lying on in, the, in this indifference curve. In this case, this is the indifference curve. It is discrete. Only these three points are lying on the indifference curve. So, we would not say that this entire portion is uh, weakly preferred, but we will see that only these yellow lines they are the bundles they represent the bundles that are weakly preferred why because again good one can only be consumed in integer quantities therefore we won't include these portions because they don't correspond to the integer quantities of good one so we will be taking only the yellow lines which correspond to integral values of good one uh, so this is the case of the discrete good now uh, concluding we will look at some other crazy indifference curves so the first one 
so crazy indifference curve so what does the first one represent the first one is a random indifference curve uh, it does it is neither convex nor it is concave um, however this type of indifference curves are possible but only thing is that they are not well behaved indifference curve when we talk about uh, indifference curves and budget lines together we will see how the consumer choice can be affected in this type of indifference curves now second case if we take uh, it is the case of so this was the first case now second case when the preferences are concave uh, so in the indifference curves they are concave to the origin and uh, we see that in this case extremes are preferred to averages we have talked about this case earlier now third case is another simple case where the indifference curve is continuous but um, you cannot find the slope at every point there is a kink so this is the point where there is a kink so it's not i mean it is continuous but it is not differentiable at all the points now this is very important uh, again when we talk uh, we, when we'll talk about the choice problem of the consumer uh, we will see how we cannot apply calculus just because this um, indifference curve is not differentiable at all points though it is continuous at all points but it is not differentiable at all points